be with each one of you. As we begin our Eucharistic celebration, trusting in the Lord's forgiveness, I would like to invite all here present and those watching over the ecumenical channel to take a moment to call to mind our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have sinned through my own fault, in thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us together to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. your covenant. Keep us one in your peace, secure in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within doors of the sea when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness in swaddling bands? When I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, thus far shall you come, but no farther. And here shall you pro your proud waves be still. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. They who sailed the sea in ships, trading on the deep water, 
waters. These are the works of the Lord and his wonders in the abyss. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. His command raised up a storm wind which tossed its waves on high. They mounted up to heaven, they sank to the depths. Their hearts melted away in their plight. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. They cried to the Lord in their distress. From their straits He rescued them. He hushed the storm to a gentle breeze. And the billows of the sea were still. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. They rejoiced that they were calmed, and He brought them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His kindness and His wondrous deeds to the children of men. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. <clears throat> the second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might, might, longer, might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Lord, on that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, 
rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even the wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. A few weeks ago, Father Thomas Berry, a passionist priest, uh, passed away at age 94. He was one of the most brilliant, creative, and gentle people I've ever met. And he's had an enormous impact, not so much on the church, but on world thought as a whole science, philosophy, theology, and the poetry of loving God and the creation of God. And he was one of my teachers at Fordham. And I asked him, Thomas, is there any parallel in all the world religions to the book of Job? And he thought a moment, going through that encyclopedia that was in his mind, and he said, nope, there isn't. It's unique in all the sacred religion, sacred literature of all the religions of, of the world, where one just man stands up before God and says, why me? Why is everything happening to me? Why have I lost my children? Why have I lost my wealth? Why have I lost my health? And I know that I don't deserve this. That's something unique in all of the world religions. And it's part of our inspired scripture. And it doesn't give any easy answers. In the end, we're left with more questions than when we began the story of Job. In the end, God questions Job and says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the world, the earth? How many sheep are in the mountains? How many fish are in the sea? How many stars are in the sky? And he goes on and on questioning Job. And Job keeps saying, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And God says, well, if you can't understand these simple things, how are you going to understand the mind and mystery of God and the purpose of human suffering? But suffering is important in our lives and struggling with it and trying to understand it. We all experience it. And we have to try to make sense of it in order to endure it. And not only to endure it, but to endure it with a sense of great faith. Now all of us, when we face suffering, it seems to arouse in us a really deep and profound prayer life. We say to God, help, help us. We're all sort of 911 believers. Our sincerest, most deep prayers are when someone we know and love is sick or dying or in trouble or broke or broken in any way. We pray for them with all of our hearts, our minds and our souls. And when we face our own suffering, that's when we say, Lord, help us, and we really and truly mean it. When things are going along pretty well, we're pretty comfortable, well, we say, thank you, Lord, and we go about our daily business. But it's in the midst of suffering that we really tend to communicate with God and to realize our total dependence on the Lord. Now, in today's gospel reading, they set out on a boat ride across the lake. And Jesus, exhausted from preaching and teaching, takes a nap in the back of the boat. These little details bring this image so much alive for us. And he had a cushion. <laughs> Somehow the apostles might have said, well, he deserves the cushion. We'll sit on the hard seats. And he's snoring away. 
And Peter and some of the others were expert fishermen. They were used to the wind and the waves and the vicissitudes of life on the water. Suddenly, things started getting out of hand. All of their skills were inadequate to meet the crisis they were in. They were rowing, they were bailing, they were panicking. And in a sense, there are moments in life when we should panic. <laughs> because things come at us from every direction and we don't know what to do. And then they look and there's Jesus snoring in the back. And they're sort of miffed at that. Why hasn't he woken up? Why is he asleep? And they wake him up and they sort of rebuke him. Don't you care we're perishing? Don't you care we're on the verge of drowning? And Jesus awakes and he calms the sea and says, Why are you panicking? Because they took their eyes off the Lord who was at rest and was looking only at the storm around them. And when we look only at the storm of life around us, well, panic is the nature of the day. And every day, there's a reason to panic. We get in a mental uh, cycle where we say, well, what could go wrong today? Yesterday was bad, and I have a feeling today's going to be even worse. We get that mental cycle going. Even if we're healthy, we might say, gee, maybe I should check my blood pressure. <laughs> what could go wrong today? What could go wrong today? But if we're really with the Lord, we don't have to panic. We could worry. He worried. We could grieve and mourn. He grieved and mourned. But there's no need to panic. Now, St. Teresa of Lusseau, the little flower, one of the most popular saints of the 20th century, she had, has had an enormous following of devotees because she showed people how to be holy in the ordinary things of life and the little task of life. But anyone that thinks her thought is superficial should have to realize she was not only declared a saint, but a doctor of the church, which is a very rare title indeed. And in reflecting on this passage, she said, it's all right to ask the Lord for help when you're panicking. Prayer's a petition. She said, but a true person of faith would have left the Lord continue to take his nap, <laughs> knowing that even if the Lord appeared to be asleep, because they were close to him, they were safe. But Jesus really was taking that nap to prove a point to them. So when he awakes, he speaks a word. And the natural world itself calms down. The natural world is not the enemy. The natural world is no longer threatening death. But the natural world is helping them get where they want to go at the command of the Lord. And so if the Lord seems to be asleep in our lives when we're sinking, when we're drowning, just remember he is always with us and there's no need to panic. Let us stand now and pray together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, right from right, true God from true God, and not made, one in being with the Father, through whom all things are made. For our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, who was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was fired. For our man was buried. The third day he rose again, in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
for the Father and the Son and His worship and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray together for our needs and the needs of all God's holy church. For a calming of the storm in our lives, that God will sustain us through the challenges of each day. Give us courage to make decisions and enduring hope when we cannot foresee tomorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For freedom from fear, that Jesus will lead us from fear and danger to the flesh of discipleship through the words of life life given us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For fidelity to those to whom we are committed, that we may be faithful to our spouses, children, community members, friends, and faith communities, encouraging and supporting one another along life's journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For all travelers, that God will smooth and quiet the way before them and guide them safely to their destination, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For our fathers, who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope, and their families and friends support and console them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For fathers who have died, that God will bring them into the joy of his kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, As we pray this Mass, Let us remember all fathers, living and deceased. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Heavenly Father, hear our prayers. Answer them as you always do. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord and brother, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. God beyond our dreams, you have stood in us a memory. You have placed your powerful spirit in the hearts of humankind. All around us we have known you, our creation lives to hold you. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice and all the sacrifices of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Lord, receive our offering, and may this sacrifice of praise purify us in mind and heart and make us always eager to serve you. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Father, 
all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. By his birth we are reborn, in his suffering we are freed from sin. By his rising from the dead we rise to everlasting life. In his return to you in glory we enter into your heavenly kingdom. And so we join the angels and the saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise. you are holy indeed the fountain of all holiness let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ before he was given up to death a death he freely accepted he took bread and gave you thanks he broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said take this all of you and eat it this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, it will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict, our Pope, with George, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through who him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Oh, yeah, stay on this side. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ, the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. The body 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 of Christ. Jesus the Christ. 
Before having the final prayer and blessing, I would like to uh, thank Father Anthony Sigmund, a visiting priest from the Diocese of Phoenix, Arizona, for celebrating with me today, and also welcome Morning Star, our music ministers today. It's their first time here, and we hope that they'll be able to share with us their talent and their faith uh, many more times in the future. And of course, I want to wish to all those viewing over the Ecumenical Channel and those here present on behalf of Father Ignatius, our superior, and all of the brothers and priests of the Society of St. Paul, a happy Father's Day. And we are asking that each of you just also remember your eternal Father, Christ your brother, and that spirit which makes us all one great family. Now let us stand and pray together. Lord, Father, you give us the body and blood of your Son to renew your life within us. In your mercy, assure our redemption and bring us together to the eternal life we celebrate in this Eucharist. We ask this through Christ, our Lord and brother. And the Lord be with you. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless those here present, and especially those who are fathers and Christian fathers. 
Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with the spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to continue to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. You shall.